Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures and TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over hash tables. This is the story so far. We saw that the last data structure that we covered was self-balancing binary search trees, and we had logarithmic searching, insertion, and deletion. The next question is, can we do better? Say, constant time. So the first solution of trying to solve the problem of getting constant time operations is direct address tables. And the idea of direct address tables is we store values at addresses and we'll know addresses beforehand and then we can just directly go to that address. So because we need addresses, we need to have an idea of keys, which is basically the same idea of addresses. And we need to associate keys with our values. We can't just store values anymore. So this is a direct address table right here, this is T. And what T does is we, we have a universe of keys, which is all possible keys. And t is an array where the size of the array is the same size of the universe. We need to create a slot for every possible key. And then when we actually use keys, we place the values associated with the keys at the slot with the address of the key. So here we want to insert the value, let's say satellite data. This is like the same thing as payload data or value. We want to insert that at the bucket with the address of 2. And that's what we do two here, we insert three, we insert five, and we insert eight. But the problem with direct address tables is pretty obvious. If the universe of keys is large, then we have to store the table with the same size of the universe. So if universe is large, then our table is large as well. On top of that, the set of keys actually used from the universe may be small relative to the entire size of the universe. So that most space in the table T that's allocated would actually be wasted. So a better solution is a data structure called hash tables. With direct addressing, a value with key k is stored in the slot k. But with hashing, the element is stored at the bucket with the index h of k. So h is our hashing function, and this hashes keys in our universe to specific indices of our table. So let's say I wanted to insert k1. I'm not going to find the bucket in the table with the address k1. I have to hash k1 first. So the hash really maps this k1 to a specific address in our t. So this address of this bucket is h of k1. It's the hash of k1. To insert, let's say, k3, I'm going to insert it at the index h of k3. So we're hashing. We have a problem now. What happens if two keys hash to the same slot? So here we have k5 and k2. And the value of the function h for both of these x values, h of k2 and h of k5, map to the same value. We now have this problem since the size of our table is no longer the size of the universe. We, can, we cannot have a unique bucket for every universe because in the sense we are you know, truncating the size of t. So when two keys hash to the same slot, this is called a collision because they collide. There are two popular methods to resolve collisions. In this video, I'll go over separate chaining and in the future, I'll go over open addressing. Separate chaining stores linked lists in our table's buckets. So if there's a collision, we simply insert the key value pair at the end of the linked list. This means that our searches and insertions and deletions become O of N in the worst case. So let's say I wanted to insert K1 first. I insert K1 first and I insert K1 to the linked list. Later on down the road, I want to insert K4 and K4 hashes to the same value or same index as K1. So this is a collision. So all we do is insert K4 to the end of the linked list. So of course, if we wanted to search or delete, that means when we hash to the value, it may not directly be the first most value. So we have to search um, the entire linked list. And in the worst case, our linked list, our table could just have one entire linked list of all values. So it, the worst case is actually O of N. So again, if our chains are large, our worst case runtimes now become O of N. To avoid this, we can resize our table when it becomes too full. So when we see that our table is getting kind of full, we want to resize it and then of course, rehash our values. So then our linked lists, our chains aren't too big. So I'm gonna cover the pseudocode and implementation code of searching, insertion, and deletion in more detail in the next video. Um, but it's quite simple. You really just, we're really just writing, searching, and uh, deleting with the structure. And all we have to do now is kind of search for these values uh, in a linked list. So this is the final verdict. Hash tables which is really the glorified data structure of all data structures, now perform in constant time. So searching, insertion, and deletion is constant time. That was hash tables. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.